New TVs for your gaming setup are more technologically advanced and less expensive than ever before. But sometimes they're large enough they may not fit on your furnishings. Stick around and I'll show you how to wall mount your TV coming up next. If you like original video content on restoring, repairing, and modding consoles and other great video game content, click the subscribe button now so you don't miss out on great new videos as they're published to the channel. Thanks so much! Warning, failure to follow the instructions of the TV manufacturer and or the wall mount manufacturer can damage your television or get you smashed in the face with a TV when it falls off the wall. Also, use a quality modern stud finder to check for electrical wires behind the wall before you drill. Hi, my name is Blaine if you're new here, and I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take to wall mount your gaming TV to your wall. I'm using this Rocketfish TV wall mount, and here's what came in the box. It's got the wall plate, the left and right brackets for the back of the television, the lag bolts to mount the wall plate to the wall and a hex key. This very long strip of bagged bolts, washers and spacers to fit all sorts of televisions except the one that I have which you'll find out in just a minute and multilingual printed instructions. From right out of the quick start guide here are the tools you're going to need. In this installation this is going to be on a drywall with wood studs so you don't have to concern yourself with the concrete only tools. For safety reasons, I recommend using a stud finder that can find electrical wires in the wall. When my wife pointed this one at me at Home Depot, it started making all kind of lights and sounds, so I knew we'd found the right one. First step, identify and distinguish right from left for the TV wall mounting brackets. You'll see the markings stamped in the metal. This one's left. This was clear as mud in the instructions, so let me give you some guidance on this. To figure out which of these holes to put a bolt through, just hold the bracket up to the back of the visa mount and center it up. In other words, just count the number of holes down once you've centered the bracket and just put the bolt in the first hole that matches up with the top mounting hole on the visa mount. It doesn't matter whether it's a centered visa mount or a drop mount like this one. While adjusting the camera, pausing for a moment here to tell you something important. The M620 metric bolt is not included in that film strip of bolt and is the exact bolt size that I needed for this TV and you might need it for yours. Check your TV documentation before proceeding. Place a washer on each bolt you intend to put through the back of the TV. Start by threading them in by hand so that you don't cross thread and don't tighten them all the way. Give the bracket a little bit of flexibility to make sure that you can put the other bolt in at the bottom without having to force it in. Use a number two screwdriver to secure the bolts to the back of the visa mount on the TV. Do not use a power tool to do this or you can damage permanently the mount on the back of the TV. Hand tight is sufficient. Don't go any tighter than that. I'm giving them one last tightness check here before moving on. Count down exactly the same number of holes from the top that you did for the other side. Remember to put a washer on the bolt before you drive it through the television. As you mount the bracket to the back of the TV, remember, tighten the screws by hand first so you don't cross thread them, and also tighten them by hand, not with a power tool, for your final tightening so that you don't damage the visa mount on the back of the TV. With a drop visa mount like on the back of this TV, taking the dead center measurement of the TV to know where it'll mount on the wall is not reliable. So grab a tape measure and measure to the center of the visa mount rather than the center of the television. This is where it will center on the wall plate. And so therefore, this is where you need to take your measurement. This is an important step in understanding how high from the 
top of your furniture, you'll want to mount your television. You may also want to compensate for any technology you want underneath the TV, such as a sound bar or any video game consoles. If you're wall mounting the television without anything underneath it, measure from the floor to the bottom of the TV and then add the measurement from the bottom of the TV to the center of the visa mount. This will tell you where to put the wall plate on the wall. Just to have some sense of how the TV would fit into this particular space, I measured from the left side of the space to the right side of the space, which actually gives a little bit of room from the edge of the iMac over to where the closet starts on the right side. So here's what I found out. There's 60 inches between the two, and the TV is 48 inches wide, which leaves 12 inches spare. To make this happen, Basically with the 12 inches left, just divide that by two and you got six inches on each side. So I measured six inches from the closet frame over and then just made a mark here. So this centers the television between the computer and the closet. By lining up the right edge of the TV with the mark, the TV will be perfectly centered between the closet frame and the iMac. It'll be different for you because you have different furnishings, but this just gives you some idea of what you can do. Use the stud finder to find the studs behind the drywall. Although they're commonly referred to as 2x4 wood studs, they're actually 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. So make sure that you measure carefully and mark the exact center of the spots. As you can see here, the red light turns on whenever it hits dead center on a stud. This one even puts a little red light up on the wall to kind of help you mark it but be absolutely certain you are as close to dead center on these studs as possible. By the time you factor in running a drill bit in and running lag bolts through, you really don't have a whole lot of room for error here. So be very precise with your measurements. I recommend looking for at least three studs in the area you intend to put the wall plate for the TV. This is just gonna give you some flexibility and the wall plate has a number of flexible areas that you can put the lag bolts through but having at least three studs gives you flexibility for where you're gonna put it. Just to get a basic idea of where I was gonna put the center of the wall plate, I measured five inches worth of space to cover the sound bar and any wiring, and then eight inches from the bottom of the TV to the center of the visa mount on the back, and just made a quick mark at the 13 inch mark on the wall. This just helped me get my bearing. I also made a quick vertical level mark here, but you don't have to. The flashlight just helped me see the line when the lighting in the room changed. If the old adage of measure twice cut once worked for cutting, I would say measure twice drill once before running holes in your wall. I just took the stud finder here and just verified the locations of the studs one last time before drilling through them. The kit comes with a cardboard template, but here's the rub. You can't see through the center of it. So I actually just took the wall mount and put it up on the wall so I could see through the center to the mark that I made for centering everything on the wall as closely as possible. At that point, you can just take a pencil and wherever your studs are, you can mark drill points directly in the center of the studs. Again, precision counts will be as precise as possible with your measurements. And again, the flashlight's just here to make the pencil marks a little easier for me to see on the wall. Use the level on the top of the wall plate to make sure those marks that you're putting in are as symmetrical and level as possible. This will make sure the wall mount is straight so that your TV will be straight. I also drew horizontal lines inside the wall plate just to make it a little easier to put it back up there if I needed to take additional measurements or marks. Drill pilot holes at each of the four points you mark using a 3 inch drill bit that's meant for wood. Be patient and slow and diligent about this. You want those pilot holes to go in as straight as possible. It's terribly important. If you put them in crooked, the wall mount will not be as stable or secure or flush 
is if you put the pilot holes in and eventually the lag bolts in as straight as possible. Check carefully. Make sure the drill bit does go all the way into the wall, but don't push any holes in the wall with the front of the drill itself. Once you're done with the first one, repeat for the other three. With the pilot holes drilled, attach the wall plate to the wall using the supplied lag bolts and don't forget to put the washers on the lag bolts first. Thread them in by hand first, just to give the wood a chance to accept the lag bolts in gently. And this helps you make sure that you're not putting the bolts in crooked so that when you go to hit them with the ratchet, everything's cool. and then secure them to the wall using the one half inch socket and ratchet. Don't use any power tools to do this task. Tighten them in by hand. I guess if I had more hair, I'd probably lather, rinse, and repeat right on camera, but instead, I'll just demonstrate my superhero powers by doing this in super speed. While you're watching me turn bolts, my dad used to say, son, always tighten until the plastic cracks. Now, I would recommend in this case, if you hear wood cracking, you've gone too far. Tighten them in by hand, but don't gorilla tighten them in. Just tighten them until they're good and tight. Use a level to check the level level on the wall plate before proceeding. If there's any imperfections, you can just loosen the lag bolts and twist the wall plate ever so slightly and straighten it out. Looking good. I'll take it. Time to mount the TV on the wall plate. There are hooks on the backs of those brackets. Put the top hooks on the top of the wall mount, lower it down, and then gently push the bottom frame, the base area of the TV, until you hear the clicks. Listen here and you'll hear exactly what you're listening for. There you go. If you hear those clicks when you push the bottom frame, you'll know your TV's mounted securely and you're good to go. Don't press on the screen or you can break it. Behind the TV, there's a knob on the bracket here and one symmetrically on the other side. Those are to adjust the tension for the tilt. So if you see me tapping it right here. So if you turn it clockwise, you increase the tension on the tilt. But if you turn it counterclockwise, you decrease the tension on the tilt. So turn it clockwise and it'll give you a little more tension. And if you go over the top of the TV like this, you'll see two screws directly in the tops of the brackets. Those are for adjusting the level ever so slightly. When you turn them, it creates basically a rotation of very small proportions on the front of the television. So just put a number two screwdriver on those screws, put a level on top of the TV, and turn them right and left until you're satisfied with the level. If we were kicking footballs in the NFL, I'd call that one splitting the uprights. All that's left to do now is peel the protective film off the screen and everything's good to go. It really does look amazing mounted on the wall. Once the sound bar is installed underneath, everything will be all set. It'll be ready for great gaming experiences. If you find yourself limited for furniture space or if you have an uneven set of furniture like you see here, it's a great option. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it added value to your gaming experiences, and I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget to like and comment, and subscribe so you don't miss all of the new upcoming original content coming your way soon. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.